Welcome to day four with Frank Scalish. I think it's number 58. I think we're at week 58, Frank, and we have a new theme music. This is we decided on this last week, if you remember. I do remember. I actually like it. So we're sticking with it okay, until I forget it, to play it. If I, remember, you, if I remember, you didn't like it that much. No, I do. It's got a good vibe to it. I what like is that it. contraption in front of you? This is a vice. We are going to do some things today. We're this talking about the many vices of Frank Scalish. Yeah. This is only one of them. This there is this more of a visual show today then? Yes. It's going to be visual because we're going to I'm going to show some things. I would um, also like you to attempt to talk through oh, I fly will. tying and stuff though just for the iTunes listeners. I feel like that could be an interesting journey that you might be able to take us on. Uh, we were we're going on a journey for sure. <laughs> How you been? I'm good, man. I'm really good. I've been painting like a crazy man. Um, I got a lot of uh, new new paint jobs coming out. For did you post one? Brands. A new one? Yeah. Or did you just send that to me? No, I posted. I Let posted uh, rock bass and a pumpkin seed bluegill on scalish underscore fishing. Oh yeah. You got a blue check mark yet? I do not. <laughs> Those are hard to get. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Oh, you're I, getting up there though. You're uh you're almost at three three K. I'm trying to bust three thousand. Come on, guys, subscribe. I mean, like wait a second. Not... I did not know you were the rookie of the year. Yeah. I think I you've won. mentioned that in passing. In passing. I won rookie of the year. Um and then made the Bassmaster Classic my first season on the Elites. What did rookie of the year pay back then? Nothing. <laughs> it got an attaboy and a pat on the back. You didn't even get a trophy? Yeah, I got a little trophy. Is that like behind about, you? Like about that big. Oh. No, it's no, still, it's not be, it's it's not still tiny. Me. It's uh tiny. yeah, so you posted that's a top water, didn't it? Didn't you post? Yeah, it's actually it, it looks like a um a uh I can't believe I just uh, sw uh sw swim an image. No, it's it's a spitting uh, image? Spit no, yeah, wa uh, the one you that walks. You that's the to... X. That's an old school X caliber yeah, yeah, walking image. Yeah. So here's what I did. It's a, that's actually a spitting image. I ground the bill off of it. Oh, okay. So so you know, hence the confusion. Um, it's a smaller profile, and um, I wanted to see what they look like, so I ground the bills off of them. This way, if I wanted to transfer that color into a spook or, you know, any other bait. Yeah. It, it would it would transfer. You, know? you had never painted a rock bass before. It says this is your first attempt at rock bass and pumpkin seed. I know. Oh, that's your first anything. attempt at pumpkin seed too. I think you nailed it. Yeah, I, hope, I appreciate. I it. mean, it's no color seven, but it's not well, a no. bad attempt for <laughs> nothing. Is a color seven, but the color seven. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today is a is a. Is a yes. show that I've been looking forward to. You kind of uh, you teased it in last week's show. Yes. Uh, and then you're coming through with it. So yeah. I, if you remember, uh, well, let's be honest. No one probably remembers, not very many people, the, was it 04 or 05 on Santee Cooper when the line came through the eye of Greg Hackney's braid, cost him the Angler of the Year title against Gerald Swindle. And then... Frank was talking about how, what were you saying, 95% of the time when you break off like that, when you're not, you know, if it's not like a shock absorption, it's your line sliding down into the eye. Correct. It's cut in the factory before they put the, the, the bend, the, uh, the keyhole, what is that called? The eye? The eye. Before they I, shape I, the eye, and it's just like a sharp piece of metal, so it cuts your line. So I, you're going to teach us how to never do that again. Yeah, what I should have done was I should have got a like a giant saltwater hook. Where am I going? Do you, is it? You're not even in the screen. No, there I'm you not go. In the screen. Do you have a giant saltwater hook? Yeah, I would have to run and get it. I have a really good one, actually, that would show it well. How long would that take? Two seconds. You but see you, the you, you know, can, Oh yeah, you know, yeah, you can see the eye right there. It's it's right just there. a so like some of the new hook companies that are like advertising, not new, but are advertising welded eye welded shut eye that's what keeps that right yeah and that's actually a good thing um mm -hmm. i'm going to show you some tricks today that are going to close the gap on that for you 
and it's gonna you're gonna be amazed. I do it on my flipping hooks, my drop shot hooks, my wacky hooks, any any hook that I'm tying directly uh, to my line. Um, I'm doing it too. Now, obviously, you don't have to do it with a treble hook, but any type of hook that you tie to your line. I put the little stopper there so my line does not get caught in between that pinch point. That's mostly where your breakoffs occur is in that pinch point where the hook eye meets the shank. And so I'm going to show you some tricks today. And then, and then at the end, I have a really super cool trick to show you that will, if so, if you can't, if you don't want to go out and buy the vice and you don't want to do all that stuff, you you'll be you'll be okay now it's it now we talked about the wacky rig so much last week so i enjoyed what I, that show frank was that was one of my show. favorite shows that's so that's my wheelhouse <laughs> so, right so what i have here is i have the finesse wide gap two watt and you could see i got in my little package here i got a little plastic weed guard for a jig Very sitting nice. in there because i use that to tie my weed guards on here let me turn this around Oh, I see what you're doing there. Yeah, so I tie the weed guard. Are you going to teach us how to do that? Yep. Really? Yep. So absolutely. what uh, What Frank is holding up there is just, like I said, that two-watt uh, Gawagatsu, but he has fashioned his own weed guard, and it looks very see how streamlined nice and professional. It is, and it's super. It's soft enough. The bass don't get in the way. You know, the bass can still get hooked, but it's rigid enough where it'll take, you know. You want to pull it over a cable or something, it'll... It'll roll it over the cable without right. getting the hook point. Right, because there's no, there's no, you know, it's free falling. There's no weight on it. It's free falling. So All right. So, so the first, we're going to close the eye. Then we're going to do a weed guard for like a wacky worm hook. Correct. And then you said you had a secret at the end. Oh, yeah. And, oh, and I'm going to show you how to tie it, the proper way to tie a feathered treble hook, too, because this, this infuriates me. When I go to the <laughs> store and there's... <laughs> Matt, you, me I'm too a, me too it drives me nuts uh, yeah i swear to god so when you go to the store and you buy a pre-tied feathered treble hook most of the time they've got way too much flash material in it and the feathers are way too heavy oh. and when i when i say heavy i'm gonna show you because i have i have a cape here of select hackle feathers so i'll show you exactly what you're looking for in the feathers and that's going to be the show today that's so. not where i was going though i was going with there's like two types of hooks and you're on a top water and you want to tie it on the exact like what you think the money hook is that you need right and you end up with some random brand number four because it's the only one that's available with the feather with treble the on feather it. treble and 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 i agree with that too i can't deal with that so i tie all my own uh, feathered trebles and everything and then and then there is a secret at the end of the show oh yeah this is yeah i mean it, yes all this, right oh this is gonna make you this is gonna make life so easy on you guys and it's gonna literally almost eliminate breakoffs for you do you want to start with the equipment that you need to get into the show or you want to just start with it and then we will do work with that as we go well i mean i can explain as i go all right. If you want. So if you if you want me just to start going, I'll just start going. Yeah, heck yeah. It's day four with Frank, Uncle Frank. That's what we do here. You just take okay. off and we're along for the ride. And I'm and I'm here for the ride as well. Okay, so basically what I have is I have my vice. And and any vice will do, okay? My mine is actually rotates and everything else because I tie flies a lot. Um so I, I got a little bit better vice, but you don't need to spend a ton of money on a vice. You just need something that's going to be capable of holding the size hooks that you want to use. It so appears this, as though you should be able to get one, a decent one for 50 bucks. Yeah, yeah exactly. So here, I mean, so, you can spend it. You can spend, here's one for 200. Oh yeah. You could go, believe me, you could go to the nth degree on this, but unless you're commercially fly tying, don't waste the money. Cause, cause you just need one big enough to hold, you know, bass size hooks so this is a two watt wide gap finesse hook and I, i'm going to just stick it in the vise here crimp it down crimp the vise down and then what we're going to do is i'm just going to show you the proper placement of it um i'm going to have to put my cheaters on because i got a black background and i can't see it there we go 
Okay, so here's so here's how I'm going to start. I'm going to lay my. I have my thread already in the. What bodkin. is that called? A bodkin, bobkin. Bob I don't or know. bod? I'm googling all this as we go, so I can keep people along for the ride. A. I have to be careful here. A bl- <laughs> <laughs> Bob. Kin. B o b k i n. Yeah. Now this has a jewel tip on it, so I don't break my line. Oh yeah, there you it is. You don't need all. Oh, it's that. a bodkin. B o d k i n. Bod. Bod. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna lay the line down right where the hook eye meets the shank, and I'm gonna just make a couple of wraps, and I'm gonna wrap over the line that I just laid down to tighten it up. See how now mm-hmm. I can pull on it, nothing happens. So now I, I lock the line down. So so it's really simple. So then basically I'm just gonna cut it, and then now I'm gonna. Nice and tight and even, I'm going to wrap up the eye of the hook to the gap. And as soon as I cover the gap, I'm going to take my whip finisher. And this is going to knot it up for me. And that's all you got to do. And now you're... I promise you lost some people with the whip finisher. Yeah, I know. But but here, I'm going to show you what it looks Yeah, it looks basic. It's but what is that? Great. That is that. That's what helps you finish the. Oh, look at that! The eyes closed. Yeah, see the eyes closed. You can and do those in fifteen seconds. Yeah, I just did. And so here, so so okay, so now you just get a little um, super glue or head cement or whatever, and just you know you put a little drop on it just to just to hold it in place. Come on. The uh, whip finisher is available for anywhere from seven to twelve well, dollars. Yeah, you can get goofy with them. And so anyway, so then, so that's really it for the eye to okay. close the eye of the hook. It's really simple. Yep. Now, what I'm doing with this, this is a uh, stuff I'm going to show you later at the end of the show. You're not this. Is he got a flashlight? It looks like he's shining a light on the hook, but you're curing it, right? Yeah, this is a UV cure type of stuff. So anyhow, so that's it. So basically, it's that it's that simple to close the eye. Okay. Now this will stop you from breaking off on drop shots on everything. It'll just it'll eliminate that where that thing gets caught up in there. Now, so now if I want to put the weed guard on it, I'm going to turn the hook so it's hook point up in the vise. So you could use that hook just like that for any drop shot hook, wacky worm hook, whatever. It's done. Essentially, okay. it's done. It's ready to fish. So if I want to put a weed guard on it, what I'm going to do is, now this is kind of cool. Um, it's just a jig weed guard, just from a standard mm-hmm. jig. So I'm going to break two of these things off. And then what I'm going to do, so I have two in my hand. If you can see it, I yep. have two. So then what I'm going to do is I have a pair of flat pliers. They're just flat. There's no, no, nothing in them. It's just flat. And I'm going to squeeze the ends of these things. And so what I did was I, I flattened them out. Mm-hmm. You have All two right. strands of a, yeah, of a gonna, flipping jig weed guard. Right. I'm going to, I'll break them apart. Two strands. Very nice. Still attached at the top. Yeah, I just flattened it out. Okay. I just flattened it out. Yep. Okay, so now I'm going to take my thread, and I'm going to do essentially employ the same same type of technique. I'm just going to wrap the thread down the hook shank a little bit over itself, and then I'm going to cut the tag line off, and then I'm going to place the weed guard. So it's facing up the hook like like that, away from the point. Away from the point on the top of the on the top inside of the hook shank, and I'm gonna make some wraps on it. Take it all the way down. Now I'm gonna bend it up and go behind where I bent it, and basically what I'm doing now is I'm building up the area.
see how it's yep. looks starting to look. So now the weed guard instead of fit is is actually starting to look like a weed guard because when you put the wraps between the weed guard and the eye, it actually kind of forces it down, which is going to give it its rigidity and put it in place. Correct. So now, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in between once I'm going to figure eight wrap in between them. And that just holds them apart for you. So I gonna now I'm going to look at it. You can leave them straight or you can angle them a little bit. I'm going to angle mine feel, a little bit. I feel bit. like that needs to be angled. So what I do is I'll hold it down at an angle and I'll build my line up some more on it. And that should, that should do it. Okay. That should do it. Let me get, I got a piece of dust. Beautiful. <laughs> got it. There we go. Okay. So there it is. Right. So now here's the, here's an important thing. I could have used one strand and cut it in half, but I want to show you guys how to measure this properly. So what I like to do is I look at the weed guard and I'll push it down. And as soon as I get the strands to the barb of the hook, okay, the strands, the strands, there's the barb of the hook. Mm -hmm. The strands are at the barb of the hook. Now I'm going to cut it right on top of the hook. Not the hook point, the hook barb. The hook barb. And now I cut it from on, on top. So now you see where it's at. So so here, let me let me um, whip finish this and so I can take it off the vise real quick. Okay, so now I'm going to take it off the vise because I'm going to show you something cool. All right, so now we got it off the voice, mm -hmm. and it's and it looks like a weed guard. It's a weedless wacky now. It's a weedless wacky. It looks just like a weed guard. So what I do is I will take my flat pliers again. These ones just happen to be bent. Um, and then I'm going to pinch a little bit on the end flat and bend it down. So I'm rolling it down. So you can see the difference here. I'll do one and show you the difference. Yep. See how see how it's bent? Yep. And then I'll do that with the other one. And basically all that does is so the bass doesn't get something pointy it's you know in the roof of his mouth. Not like they are and really start gonna jumping. Know. Yeah, exactly. Not like they're really gonna know because they eat crayfish and stuff. So that's pretty much that's pretty much the finished. That's clean. Wacky rig. That's Frank, that looks amazing. Yeah, it's clean and fast. You do one in about, what, a minute and a half? Yeah, if I wasn't talking through it, I can get them done in about a minute a piece, easy. Yeah, that's impressive. And so that's the that's the wacky rig. That's the hook. That is the hook that you use with the five-inch dinger. Yes, this is it. Two watt. And I like the two watt because the five inch dinger sits good, well in it, and there's still enough gap space for it. That's fantastic. And so that's really, that's really it. I mean, it's pretty simple, actually. Very cool. Okay, so now feathered treble hooks. Okay, here's here's one of my crazy shads, already rigged with the with the double O rings and the feather treble mm -hmm. you know the whole nine yards so that bait is ready to fish yeah this bait's ready to fish now see you can see me through those feathers yeah okay that's important so when you're looking at feathers they're called hack uh hackle feathers or select hackle select is better these are not select these are just strung hackle feathers. Where do you get the where do you get this stuff from? Fly tie in shops and stuff oh, like that. Okay. Now you have you to understand, like there's a lot of a lot of states that are people that are listening to this, like you're up in I mean, people like fly fish around you, right? Yeah. But but Not, you can get this stuff anywhere. Okay. Okay. Now what you want is you want select because what they do when they when they hand select them, you see how I got just big capes of this stuff? What they the do is They'll look at them and they'll pick out selected ones. Now look at these three right here. Those are ultra fine. You can see right through those feathers. Right through them. I mean, here you can look at. You can see. You can see my eyes through them. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's the feather you want. Really? Yes. You want these super fine, transparent feathers. You don't want a feather that's. Now, see, I picked this stuff out. The guys at the yeah. fly shop hate my guts because I pull them out of the package and go through them, so I get a lot of what <laughs> I want. 
they get really mad, but that's okay. I'm trying to find a bad feather here. Is it one with the big vein in it? Yeah, here, here's a here's And it's coarse. Well, it's here's a bad one. You see how it's it's thick? It's thick mm -hmm. in the middle right here. Yeah. Now here's a good one right next to it. Good. More furnish. You see yes, you see how thin and fern style -y that is? Hundred percent. That's a nice piece of that's a nice feather right there. Okay, so that's how to pick the right feather out. This is what you want. Nice and transparent because you're tying something that you want to look like a tail feather. I mean, look like a tail of a fish. Most of them are semi-transparent, especially in bait fish. You don't want a lot of bulk on it because then it looks like you got cotton seed or something stuck yep. on your hook. You want it to look alive. And so the idea is not to tie it heavy, to tie it sparse. So this okay. is not a deal where, I mean, more is better. Like you don't want this thing looking no. like a chicken Look. liver on a hook. Right. Less is more when you're doing this. Remember that. Less is more. Okay. Ooh, uh, yeah. Chickens and treble hooks do not like, like yeah, chicken liver, you always do treble hook. Less is feathers, more. Feathers, tie it on a treble hook. Okay. So now let me get a four-aught, I mean a four-aught, a number four treble here. And, and so that I'm hackle like, stuff is easy to find too. I just Googled it. Too. Oh yeah. So you can literally do select hackle feathers and it comes up and all over. Yeah. And that's what you want. You want select. Okay. So now I got, I have my treble hook and what I like to do is I like to put the hook in the vice. So the bottom hook is in the vice and the top two are on the top of the vice like that. So here, oh, let me, so you see the top two hooks or the top two yep. are riding on the top bottoms the hook is in the vice this way it's going to be real easy to tie this so now the next material you need is crystal flash okay this, this is the this stuff is, that's in this is just pearl crystal flash okay so uh, so i'm not going to make it too too flash heavy I'm just going to use a few, a few strands. So just to I'm, catch the light. Yes, just to catch the light. So basically, I'll pull one out, one strand out, and then I'll fold it in half, and then I'll fold it in half again. So what it's going to give me, it's going to give me four basically, and okay. then I'll fo fold it in half again. So that gives me four, right? So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this. Well. First, first I have to uh, get my thread out and make some wraps right on the tip of the end of the hook here. And don't, and you don't have to get crazy. We don't need tons of, we don't need tons of it. All right. I'm not in my fly tying room, so I'm losing no, my fine. materials. Why here. do you not want to overdo that? You don't want a big bulky blob of line up there okay. so now what now what i'm going to do is i got my four strands of crystal flash <laughs> when i put it through the hook i'm i'm putting it right through here i'm going to put these things on i'm going to put it right through the eye of the hook and then i'm going to fold it in half right down the hook shank so now that's going to make it eight eight strands so I, I put there. it through and I folded it in half and now I'm just going to make a couple of wraps on it right there like that. And that's good for that. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to take my hackle. Now here's how you handle the hackle. I don't want them really long, like an eel. I want them short. So I want them to come just behind the hook, maybe the length of the hook shank. You see what I mean? So now I got my measurement. So I'm going to hold the feather like that, and I'm just going to pull the f pull down on it and create that space. So I'm using the, the top portion. That's going to be my tie-in point. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to reverse the feather. I'm going to tie it upside down. So you want the feathers to splay out. <sighs> this is cool. And so now I just put it on the top of the hook shank right there, and I'm going to make a couple of wraps. And then I'm going to get rid of this end here because we don't need it anymore. 
cut that off. Now I get my other one, and I already pre-selected some. And so I got my other one, and I'm going to do the same thing. Now I'm going to rotate my vise a little bit and do it on the in between the next set of hooks. So basically you're going to run these one feather between each hook. And it's really easy. Just splay it out. You'll see it starts to open up for you. Splay is that when you that's when you circle the Yeah, so your around it. so your feathers are actually going to go out instead okay. of folding in, your feathers are going to splay outward. So super important stuff in this this is which direction the feather is and then also instead of using the end of the feather and then having to chop your feather to to, to a reasonable length you're actually oh you can't cut the tips of the feathers because you kill the axe yeah that's what i'm saying but if otherwise you'd have this long trailer so you have to you have to cut the yeah and so you have to cut the trailer halfway up uh, up instead of you can't just trim the back Right, and so I have a rot rot rotary vise, so I can just spin the vise to get to the other side of the hook, and I don't have to keep taking it out all the time. And so anyhow, so now I trim this one. Nice and neat. Boom. Bring the vise back to flat. And we're just going to couple more wraps, and then we're going to whip finish this bad boy, and it's all done. Can you Google how to do the whip finish pretty easy? Like, is there? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Because that's the only thing, like from my perspective, that we've done so far, to where I'd be like, eh, I'm not really sure how that's going to go. Okay, but I can tell you, I'll, I'll explain something how the whip finish actually goes. Right. Um, so basically, it's like the whip whip finisher is like tying a snell knot. Okay, it's going to loop the line up for you and then you're going to wrap it around wrap it around wrap it around and then when you pull it through it cinches it all down just like if it was a snell okay. knot and so so anyhow so that's it so your tail feather is now complete and it looks really good and it's splayed out see how it's splayed yeah, out Yeah, that's phenomenal i have three feathers on there they're very transparent Mm-hmm. okay and my flash material is in there, but it's sparse. It's not heavy. It's very sparse. This is a really well tied. That looks phenomenal for a trailer hook. And, that's and when the, are you uh, when are you going to use a feather treble? I use feather trebles on my walking baits, my popars, um, my P seventy ones, my crazy shads. I use uh, feathered hooks on my Devil's Horse. Um, any top water that I'm using that I'm not going to be fishing a hundred miles an hour, I use the, I use uh, feather trebles because when you sit at rest, okay. When the, when you sit the bait at rest and it's bobbing around in the small waves, the feather is always undulating and moving. And so it looks like even though you, the bait's barely moving, the feather's doing its thing. And so I always... I, I like to, that's when I use it. And okay. now I'm going to talk about a, a really neat trick to um, help you guys out. The guys that don't have vices and can't and don't you want to spend the money to get involved. I mean, in I was looking at I'm trying to add it all up. I look I think that for I mean, if you really looked at it and wanted to, I think you could do all this for under 150 bucks. Oh, yeah. Every bit. Yeah. Every bit. I mean, like, if you wanted to, you could also do it for, like, 2000 Yeah, you could <laughs> It take just it. depends on how fancy you want your vice. Right, I exactly. You could take it to any level you want it, okay? So so here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to show you... Where's my L? You put a uh, two-aught drop shot wacky hook back into the vice with the... Yeah, just because I'm basically all I'm doing is I'm using it as an example. But here, I'll take it out and we'll put a B10S. Since we talked about the B10S the other day, I'll do it with one of those. Okay. Not that it matters because. Is that can... that straight shank? Yeah. So okay. this is a B10S. This yeah. is actually a size one. Uh, this is what I tie a lot of streamers with. 
and articulated streamers. I would use the one out for wacky rigging, but this is a one. So I'm going to put it in the vise, and I'm going to keep the keep it straight so it's parallel to the vise, like so. Okay, make sure I can rotate that. Now I'm going to take my. I'm using Loon UV Clear Finish. Okay. Um. There's a ton of these on the market. Loon is just one. Um, there's a lot of other ones, and they come in colors too. Holy cow! That's like the most expensive things yet. It is, but here's how. This is what. This is why. Okay, so it's like twenty bucks. It's it's UV, and so here's all I'm gonna do. Now I'm putting these on because I want to make sure. So I'm gonna take <laughs> this, and I'm gonna put it right behind the the eye of the hook right behind it right in the crack not in the hole of the eye you don't want to put this in the hole so it's sitting on top of there now i'm going to hit it with this and as i'm doing it i'm going to rotate my voice and it's going to cure it and i'll sh i'll take this off and put it real close up for you so you can see it why does the uv cure it I don't know. Gluffy, Gluffy fly fishing makes the same stuff, and th and they got tons of different colors of it. And there's different consistencies. You have a, f a thin, medium, and a heavy. Um, if I were going to do this, th this is a this is a medium. But if I was going to do this for the hooks, I would use a medium or a heavy because one drop and it'll hold its gotcha. shape. If it's thin, it'll yep. run across the hook. And then that's just like you can just get a universal UV cure light. For Correct. 14 bucks, and you're good. And you're good to go. All right. Okay, so that's it. So now, so if you're not if you're not into the vice and you're not into all that stuff, this is essentially done right now. And here, look at it. Can't see it. Up, 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 oh. up, up, over. Yep. Oh, yeah, very cool. Okay, and that's protected. It's in there. Your line's not going to go in it. And that's the trick. That's if you want to eliminate tying anything um, and it's ready to fish. And literally, I mean, literally, once you UV cure it, you can use it right yeah. now. There's no wait time on it. I uh, I looked up UV curing because I've always wondered about that. They do crankbaits that way, too. They put finishes yeah. on crankbaits that way. It's a photochemical process created when high-intensity ultraviolet light, so I'm assuming that's a, that full of flashlights, high-intensity ultraviolet light, is applied Correct. to coatings containing... Oh, great. Photo initiators. That word looked <laughs> a lot more dangerous than it was once I started saying it. But that's a life lesson. It's not all that sometimes your problem is not as hard as it seems. Tackle it head on. Photo initiators are molecules that release free radicals. Atoms, molecules, or ions with unpaired. And you lost me at that part. But basically, that's what that is. So that's that's the easiest. That is the UV cure stuff. And, and um, like I said, there's a bunch of brands out there. Um, Gluffy fly fishing um, is one. Loon is another one. The, and they're readily available. It's they're it's really it's fantastic because you don't have to sit and tie. Like if you were in a hotel room getting ready for a tournament, you wouldn't have to bring your fly tie in vice and all that mm -hmm. stuff with you. You could just bring one little bottle of that stuff in a UV light, and you can sit in your room and heck, by the time you had one beer, you'd have a thousand hooks done. Yeah, but you you'd have to bring the vice though for the. You would have treble, to bring a treble the feather. feather travels. But. I want to go back to that for a second, Frank, because that's something. Do you can you mix you mix and match and put different colors in? So like, if you were going to buy, or do you just stick with white only? Um, I've done, you know, two whites and one very light uh, chartreuse. I've done grizzly hackle, which is barred. Uh, it's white barred brown or white barred black. Um, but I've found that the white works the best for me. Um, and I have every, listen, my fly tying room downstairs looks like a fly tying shop. I have literally hundreds of bags of different feathers, fur, crystal flash, you name it. I've probably 
I have probably as much fly tying equipment as a fly shop down there. And I can tie tail feathers with anything I want. And I found white is the best, which is crazy, but it is. Why don't you use marabou? Because marabou seems like it spreads out. It undulates in the water. I'm a big fan of the marabou crappie jig growing up. And it's weird right. to me that there's a lot le- there's there's less marabou in the fishing world than I, I would have thought there would be based on that one little crappie jig. Right. And I'm going to tell you why. Because on the tail feathers, I want the feathers to splay out at rest. Okay. So when you pump the bait, the feathers move in, they splay out at rest, they undulate, and they move in the water. But marabou gets leech-like. It gets super thin and leachy. It, 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 marabou doesn't poof out once it gets wet. It's like a leech. It moves like crazy. I tie tons of steelhead flies out of marabou. Even I even palmer it, so I make big bulky heads, and then it teardrops when it gets you know wet. Okay. But... I've on the treble hooks, the marabou actually snags around the treble hooks ah, because it's so leachy. Like it snags around the hook and then it's like a glob of fur on that back of a hook <laughs> where the spine in the feather keeps it splayed and keeps it away from tangling in the hook. And then do you feel like a feathered treble is, is enhancing the like, what is its purpose? Because I know in Oklahoma, there are times, especially in the fall when they're on little shad, when I am, I firmly believe that they're eating the feather treble hook. And it's a possibility. I mean, here on my Super Spook Junior, okay, um, you see how nice these ones mm-hmm. are splayed out. Because these hooks, if you buy them in a cape, they're bent in the cape. And so they're they're bent a certain way. So then you can tie them so they bend out like this. This is what splayed oh, means. okay. Okay. And so that's, that's what I look for. Now, if you buy select saddle hackles that come in a little tiny bag and there's like 10 feather tips in there, they're going to be a little bit more flat, but if you turn them upside down, okay, they'll splay for you on the hook. And when I say upside down, like the way the feathers go on a bird is the way they're supposed to go. So if you flip them over, they're upside down. And so that's how you, that's how you tie them on. You tie them upside down. So they splay out. That's good stuff. It's crazy, but you know, it's easy stuff. Now the, now the um, UV cure stuff to close those, that little spot on the hook is money. Mm -hmm. Um, You just got to be careful not to get it in the eye because it'll seal the eye shut. No. Yeah, all this stuff is very, very reasonable and easy to obtain. Right. And I mean, you know, it didn't take it didn't take us long to tie this. It didn't take us long at all to tie this. Um, What other material? Like, let's say I want a coarser. Okay, so uh, Gamagatsu has one out that's got a uh, titanium weed guard on it. It's pricey. um, You could you could you could use they make. In the fishing industry, they make um, flexible wires for inline spinnerbait hooks. For you could buy the wire for wire weed guards. Um, I don't use wire. I like the jig the jig weed guard material way better. Okay. Um, Is there I, a certain you know you have like a stiff weed guard, uh, a soft weed guard? Are the bristles different, or just more or less of them? No, sometimes the bristles are a little bit thicker. I use a little bit thicker one for this type of application uh, because it's not thick. One strand's not thick enough to make a difference to a fish. Okay. So I use the thicker one because it helps me if I'm fishing brush piles. It helps me not hang into the wood all the time. Now, the grass won't matter because half the time you don't even need a weed guard in the grass. Yeah. Because you're, it's weightless, and it's, as soon as it rests on the grass, you just shake it off. And if you rig your wacky style perpendicular, like we talked about a million times <laughs> rigging the dinger the other day, um, your hook point's always riding up. And so your likelihood of it snagging in the grass is much less, way less. I learn something every week. It's fun. Fishing's great. <clears throat> How many will you do then? Will you have ready to, like, if I'm going to spend an evening and do it, or one of the listeners is going to spend, will you just do, like, 10, 15 a night? Is there any 
downside to doing a thousand of them? No, there's no downside. What I what I do, I have a box in my boat that's about this big. It's one of the small okay. little, little half boxes. Yeah, like a thirty four hundred. Right, but it and it's half as thick as this. Okay. It's, it's half as thick. So what I did was I got a piece of closed cell foam, put it in the bottom, and I tied ten number twos, ten number fours, ten number fives, ten number sixes. And and that's what's in my boat at all times. And then if I go through some of them, you know, if I'm sitting around doing nothing, I'll I'll tie a bunch more. And I'm ne- I n- I'm never without them. I have them all the time on me. It's because it, it, it's something to do, and it's you know, in all honesty, it's kind of tying that stuff and tying flies. It's kind of therapeutic. Does really. synthetic stuff work at all, or it's just a hundred percent real? Now I use all real feathers for this stuff. Um, I have synthetic material that does work, um, but. You know, now I'm now I have to make sure that I off pull the f- synthetics out so it's longer and shaped more like a teardrop when it goes on the hook. Because I hate when they some of the ones you do in the store with the synthetic they cut 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 it at the end and it's perfectly flat. That's no good. And so, you know, I you always want to have any synthetic fibers that you use you you want to you pull out some of the ones in the middle make it longer so if you look at it it looks naturally flowing it's not just a straight cut um i don't really tie my treble feathers like that i just use the feathers it's easier it works good and if it's not broke don't fix it i haven't seen where a synthetic treble hook's going to outperform natural feather okay and they so make Go ahead. I say, is there ever a time you don't use a feather on the back of a top water, like a one that you traditionally would? Like, do you ever throw a pop bar without a feather? No, I my my popping baits. I'm always feathering up. Okay. Uh, my spooks. Sometimes I won't put feathers on my spooks uh, because if I'm really working them hard and fast, they don't have time to see that feather anyway. They're just going up for the commotion and the noise. I'll tell you this. So. A lot of the downside to to a feathered treble on a spook is it at any I think you were the one talking about this, it sometimes serves as like a rudder so it keeps that bait from being really crisp and wide. That's why on some of the you don't see a lot because sometimes the, you don't see it on the spooks where they it's just the hook, you know, not the feathered treble because it keeps it from being as crisp. But your way, I feel like, with as thin as those oh, you don't feathers think are, that yeah. has zero impact on the action of the bait. Zero. 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 I, I, I work, sometimes I'll work my spook, I'll twitch it one time and get it to go, pff, you know how they glide? Yep. And then right at the end of the glide, I'll pff, again and it'll glide the other way. And I can make them just swim and glide and the feathered trebles don't bother it any this is the pet peeve i have with buying pre-tied uh feathered trebles in a store most of them are too too heavy they're too thick they're using a solid bodied feather and not a transparent very you know very thin feather where you could see through them and that's where a lot of the problem comes in and then obviously just go to YouTube and look at how to finish off and not. Yeah, there's other ways to do it. The whip finisher is the easiest way. You 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 know, you just uh, the the way you put the line in it, the line will go around here, around here, and then you cross it over, you wrap it around the hook five or six times, and then you take this part, you pull it out, and then you cinch it down and take it out. Anyway, it's it's really easy you can go online and see mm-hmm. a tutorial It'll, you'll literally pick it up in one second i mean it's that easy and um and then again um you know you could loop a piece of line and then wrap over the loop and then cut your line stick it through the loop and pull the loop through but the whip finisher does exactly the same thing so why would you add steps you know what i mean you don't want to add steps to it you want to make it as fast as possible mm-hmm and that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I do a lot of this stuff 
all the time. Winter winter's good because everything's frozen, and if you're not ice fishing, you know, I do a lot of painting in the winter. I do a lot of fly tying in the winter. You know, that's when I really get get busy. I do a lot of my lure designing in the winter. Of course, if I get ideas while I'm fishing about a new bait, mm-hmm. I start it immediately so I don't forget, you know, what application I wanted that for. But, um, you know, it's a, it's a never-ending process, but at least in, you know, when it's crappy out and you can't get out on the water, if it's, you know, thunderstorming and lightning, you can't go out. I mean, you could literally tie 20 feathered treble hooks in 20 minutes. I firmly believe if you're doing something that you feel like is, you know, valuable and your head's in the game and you're thinking about where you're going to use these hooks and what, you know, how you want your feathers built. I mean, I don't, obviously a fish doesn't know what you're thinking or how long you've been thinking <laughs> no, it, but no. from a, I think from a mental and decision-making standpoint, you're going to be more engaged when oh, you're yeah. doing something every day is it during the off season, as opposed to when you just put your fishing stuff in the corner for three months and then pick it up when the water's thawed. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, I, you know, I did, I got all my rods cleaned up, all my reels, um, taken apart, lubed. I got all that stuff done. Um, I just put new line on the other day, went through all the rods, put new line on some of my braided rods. I just reversed the braid cause I put the braid on last season. Mm-hmm. And so then I'll just spool it off and then spool it on another spool and then put it on the rod, the rod. And then I'm, it's backwards. So all my new braid is now in the front and my used braid is now on, you know, tied to the backing. Um, so I did all that stuff. Uh, we had one really good day and I got out and shop back the carpeting and everything out of the boat, took the cover off, aired it out, got it all dry. And, you know, now we're going to have two good days coming up. I'm going to load the boat up and get it ready to go. And then I'm fishing after that. Nice. I feel like the paint shop should have should offer some exclusive hand tied feather troubles. They did. I did. I did them for um, the Hula Popper 2.0, the Jitterbug 2.0. I used uh, feathers called Guinea Guinea feathers. Splayed them out backwards. I palmered a hackle on the top of the shaft so it looked like a woolly bug almost with splayed feathers out. And then I took two long. Um, uh, real thin number 12 hackles two of them and put them out the back so it looks like a, a worm you can if you google them you could see them now they they you know put those in production tie those in production that's on the yeah that's on the uh hula popper and then the jitterbug is the one that has two long skinny feathers that stick out the back which um as the jitterbug walks back and forth those feathers swim like a snake all, they're super skinny feathers. They're almost like uh, marabou would do. Boy, you just named two baits that don't. Yeah, I know. Dude, those were baits we threw when we were kids. But at least now they're doing some cool things with them. You know. Hold on, I got on. I got off of lure. <laughs> and... I so now can. I've got a bunch of pictures of Samsung telephones called the Jitterbug perfect <laughs> i mean i had never even heard of that thing that's outstanding i don't even know which hook i just did now i gotta cure this one so i could put it in my my good box here so while you're looking for that see i can get some work done you see i how found the, it you... on the jointed the jointed jitterbug that's okay lay it out there man that's a that's a wicked color right there which one is that one is that uh, red and black oh yeah that's that's cool that one right there. So you designed that feather yeah. on the back. Oh, yeah. Neat. I do a lot of stuff, guys, for a lot of lure com- a lot of lure companies. It's crazy. You know, I always wanted a career in this industry, <laughs> and now I got one. <laughs> now you have one. <laughs> yeah, now I have one. Now all I want to do is fish. <laughs> you know how that goes. Mm-hmm. But see, I'm curing this right now, the one I just tied up. I'm doing it right now so I can That doesn't hurt your fingers? You don't have to worry about it? You can put the curing light on you? It's just, yeah, it's just a UV flashlight. Oh, okay. I wouldn't look in it. (laughs) I wouldn't, like, put it in your eye. (laughs) Cure the eyeball. Disclaimer, don't do that. (laughs) 
well, that's uh, that's three or four really cool little things that if you get a, you got a little cabin fever, you want to do some some stuff on your own, you can't find the hook for the feather treble that you're wanting. Oh yeah, it's there's no reason sick. not to do these things. No, this was massively educational today. Yeah, they're always educational. Just so little see. little details is what make it work. So see now that I'm just gonna cure the treble I just tied. Put throw it in my box. Why not? I made it. Do you have your feathered treble box with you? No, everything's downstairs, dude. Ready to I go in the boat. Uh there Stack have been several label. requests for a Frank Scalish portion or little section of maybe the tackle room at some point. A video. I can, I can do that. We can do that. Actually, there's a picture of it, I think, on my earlier posts on Instagram. Very early posts. If you had to throw either the hula popper or the jitterbug, which one are you going with? Oh, I'm going jitterbug all the way. That jitterbug's hard to beat, man. And I'm going with the I'm going with the smaller size black, to be honest with you, because that's, dude, that's like the first topwater I ever owned was a black jitterbug. It's got some nostalgia value to it. When was the last time you saw someone throw that? You think someone's throwing a jitterbug on the Elite Series in competition? I'm going to go and say no, but I don't see why you wouldn't. I could see Steve Kennedy doing it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I exactly. could see him going. I just picked up the jitterbug and it was awesome. Yeah, and man, they were crushing it. <laughs> I could see him. They wouldn't it touch too. the hula popper, but <laughs> man, they were on that jitterbug. But yeah, I mean, this is this is good. I mean, see, and, and here, look, you know, when I would travel a lot, I would just take. Uh, a 3700 box with no dividers in it and shove some hackle feathers in there, shove my treble hooks in there that I was going to tie. And then it, when I would run Bass Masters, I would just tie in my room in the evening, tie mm-hmm. them up, get them ready Keep to you go. Keep engaged. Get yeah. Because you. then you're thinking too. You're always thinking. Yeah. That's that, good stuff. That's what else you got thing. for, uh, what else you got? I for today that's it. Come on, we I mean can't we can't give it all up on the first you know one shot. We need other shows going on. Now I can I get agree. the vice out of my face and readjust this and <clears throat> get my deer back in there. We're good now, ready to go. What are the stories on the deer? Same season, different states. Um, I actually got the eight point the eight point. The bottom one um, scored like a 139. Um, I shot him during a tornado. And then the, the nine point above it is not nearly as big. Um, but that was my only chance to hunt in Ohio. And he walked by and he wasn't going to walk anymore else. <laughs> After that, he came sneaking on and I said, no, you're done. Hmm. You got horns. I need meat and you're done. We are into the one, through the second, into the third week of March. We're in well in the third week of March. Uh, how much longer before you're open water and fishing? Month? Two months? Month? Middle of uh, April? About about an hour. <laughs> about we got most of our lakes are open now. Okay. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna I'm getting everything set up uh, because I want to go. I love fishing ice out. I got some videos I want to do. Everyone says that up north. What does that mean? Why do the fish like that? Do they know that there's no ice over them? I mean, is it a dramatic change? Are there big movements? Because they always talk about ice out. The dramatic change is that we can finally put a boat in the water. But no, it's <laughs> the fishing's really good. Um, I, I was on them. The last day I went fishing was New Year's Eve. Uh, this year, last year, this year, New Year's Eve. Um, I went New Year's Eve and the day before and wound up catching almost 60 in two days. And then, uh, so I know where they, in these 
couple of lakes I'm on, I know where they're, they wintered. So now at ice out, I can go right there and follow them right up to the spawning grounds. And so I, since they're stacked up, ice out fishes a lot like right before ice. And so once I find them, I know where they're at. It's not difficult to get them. And, and we've had pretty stable. I mean, we had a snowstorm the other day, but for the most part, not too much precipitation. So the water's pretty stable. Now, if we get a lot of rain, that changes everything because muddy, cold water is a nightmare. But um, but the water's pretty stable, so um, I'm looking forward to getting out and catching some. Answer me this: so if these fish have been under ice for whatever three four months. months, right? Yeah, three months. And you have a s- snowstorm, and it puts eight inches foot of water on the ice. Is it just jet just dark? in the lake for 24 hours a day yeah when there's snow when there's a lot of snow on the ice it's dark but when there's not snow on the ice you'd be surprised how light it is um when we were ice fishing this year uh we drilled holes and it was really really cold like 10 degrees out and so we put up the shanty and when we got inside the shanty the holes would like glow in the dark because from all the surrounding light coming through the ice, the holes mm-hmm. look like that. It's like you put a light bulb in them. Oh, you know really? What I mean, yeah. It was so the really water cool. was brighter than way brighter, way way experience. brighter. Yeah, yeah. But it's nice because when the lakes freeze, um, you have fantastic, fantastic spring fishing because you have a lot more fish moving in mass. Mm-hmm. When the lakes don't freeze, the bass kind of lollygag around. They're spreading out. Some go shallow right away, even though it's the middle of winter. They're shallow already. And some stay out. And so, but when it freezes, it's the most stable conditions the water's going to have. And so now the bass, they gang up really tight. They're already moving where they want to go. Even though there's ice on the water, they're moving towards where they want to go. So when the ice melts, they're already there. And it's pretty wild. So we'll have a we'll have really good good spring fishing this year because we this is the best ice we had in a long time. That's good stuff. Is it time to cue the music? Key it. Key it. I'm going to load my boat, man. <laughs> Dang it! That's the wrong song. See already. I had it queued up, and I queued up the wrong just, one. Just dude, just say you hate it then. Don't play. <laughs> there it is Uncle Frank's going fishing And we'll see you next Thursday On day four This was educational We had a fly tying vice Feathers All sorts of little tips and tricks That you've heard Frank talk about Over the past year and a half He kind of dished on some of the juice Today on day four So can we bring the Can we bring some more props Back in, in the future We can And we will Alright You only see it here On day four with Frank Scalish. Frank, have fun. Adios, man.